Mm. I call uh, Chris Farfoy. Thank you very much, Mr Chair, um, for a chance to speak to um, part two of the Public Safety Public Protection Orders Bill. Mr Chair, I just wanted to um, hone in on uh, Clause 112, uh, which uh, pertains to uh, inspectors. Uh, and um, within uh, the clause, it says that the Chief Executive may uh, designate someone to act, uh, one or more person or more lawyers to act as independent inspectors. And I think um, the point that my colleague um, Jacinda Ardern made just before she uh, finished her uh, contribution to this debate uh, around the role of inspectors in this specific case um, when we're dealing with a, a very small number of people uh, is a, a very pointed one. Uh, Mr Speaker, we do want to make sure that these, this small group uh, of offenders and people who uh, pose an extreme risk uh, to the public are managed and managed properly. Uh, and because uh, it is such a small and, I guess, sensitive uh, group of offenders and potential offenders, uh, we want to make sure that it, that it is uh, the, 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 the duty of the state uh, to manage them. Um, so the appointment of inspectors in these residences that are being proposed under this legislation uh, is a very important one. Mr Speaker, the people that will come under these types of uh, public protection orders will still continue uh, to have uh, the rights of prisoners or inmates um, uh, as they would, probably would have uh, under, um, a, a, um, uh, under a sentence that they previously were on. And I do note that um, uh, in part one uh, that they will still have the ability to make phone calls and those phone calls will still be able to be monitored. Uh, and I think that is one of the things that um, an inspector will monitor closely uh, as to whether or not that has done, been done properly. And, Mr Speaker, I guess in the, uh, in the context of recent events uh, around Philip Smith and his management uh, uh, before his uh, escape from prison or detention, uh, you would hope that the inspector uh, in this case, uh, when we're dealing with public protection orders, is given the right tools and the right resources to make sure um, that any um, arrangements that are made or any um, details that are within this bill to, to allow uh, the monitoring of phone calls uh, or any other communications are, uh, are done properly so they can do their job. Uh, because we have seen in the last month uh, what can happen when things aren't monitored properly, uh, when someone who uh, was in uh, prison for a very serious crime uh, was able to go uh, on unmonitored leave and was able to organise a trip to South America, uh, was able to use, um, was able to um, obtain uh, $10,000 uh, for that trip, and, and I understand was also, um, while during his time in prison, was able to use some student loan money uh, to fund some of his operation. Mr Chair, um, we would hope that the inspector in Clause 112 uh, would be given the freedom and the ability to do their job properly. Um, because at the moment we question the confidence that the public would have uh, in the ability to monitor things like this if we have serious cases like this. We are very happy uh, that Philip Smith is back in New Zealand. Uh, he should never have been out in the first place. Um, but if the job of the corrections uh, service uh, was done properly uh, and if it was uh, run properly by this government, Mr Speaker, the likes of Philip Smith wouldn't have the ability uh, to go out, to be able to leave uh, detention, to be able to f uh, board a plane to uh, South America, to be able to get a passport, Mr Chair. Uh, so it's one thing for us to put in this legislation the ability to monitor or the ability to inspect, um, but that actually has to be done at the front line, and we question uh, whether or not the um, this government has the ability to do that while we... Um, uh, may me the fact that this piece of legislation uh, does build those things in. These are very serious offenders, Mr Chair. Uh, we, uh, we do uh, uh, realise that we're taking away a degree of their freedom and there are some, uh, the ability to review there. Um, but as it pertains to Clause 112 in Part 2, Mr Chair, we do and we will ask, continue to ask questions of the government as to whether or not, while they are building these safety um, um, systems into the legislation, whether or not they're actually able to carry it out. Uh, and be able to monitor some of the, um, the behaviour of some of our serious criminals uh, who, are who are in prison here in New Zealand. And it is a sad state of affairs where we ha do have to... that We have got a recent example of someone who wasn't monitored properly, uh, who was able to gain a passport uh, and who was able to board a flight to South America uh, and make a laughing stock of the Corrections Department. 
Uh, Mr Chair, that simply isn't good enough, and uh, we recognise that in this legislation uh, there is a, a degree of safeguard in there with inspectors, uh, with the ability to monitor phone calls, Mr Chair. Chris Farfoy. Uh, with the ability to uh, monitor phone calls, and we would ask that this government, if it is willing uh, to put in these kinds of safeguards uh, into this legislation, as it does with other areas of corrections, uh, that they will be able to uh, staff and resource that properly. Um, I do notice that uh, it is a point one or more lawyers. Um, I understand that there is going to be a very small uh, amount, a number of inmates that may come under um, close inspection of this um, piece of legislation. Um, but we would hope that that, uh, that inspector role, inspectorate role is taken seriously um, because we don't want to get ourselves into another Philip Smith situation. Um, so if this government is going to stick true to its word and true to its um, uh, word to the, uh, to the public that it is going to keep them safe, and that is the, the purpose of this bill, Mr Speaker, because these are serious offenders who we think uh, would um, have a high degree of probability of offending as soon as they are released, um, that, this, that this inspectorate role is taken seriously. Uh, and if the, there is the ability for corrections, and I understand, I hope it will be corrections that will be monitoring uh, these inmates to monitor mail, uh, to monitor phone calls, uh, any, any other communication uh, that uh, inmates may have, that they wouldn't be able to go and book a flight to Chile, uh, that they wouldn't be able to go and uh, renew their passport under their first name, and that they wouldn't be able to go and um, get their hands on $10,000 so they could sustain themselves if they were going to escape prison. Um, Mr Chair, um, if the government uh, could answer any questions around the resourcing of the inspectorate role, we would welcome that, um, because uh, as of recently, we've seen that example that fills, does, does not fill uh, the public with much confidence. Members, we come to the vote on part two. The question is, a part two stand part? Those of that opinion will say aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. A party vote's called for. I'll ask the clerk to conduct a party vote. New Zealand National. 60 votes in favour. New Zealand Labour. 32 in favour. Green Party. 14 opposed. New Zealand First. 11 votes in favour. Maori Party. 2 votes in favour. Act New Zealand. 1 vote in favour. United Future. 1 vote in favour. Uh, members, the ayes are 107, the noes are 14. Part two will stand part. We now move to the schedule. We have the Minister's uh, amendment in the item relating to section 47.1 of the Mental Health Compulsory Assessment and Treatment Act 1992 to replace penal institution with prison. The question is that the amendment be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. A party votes? No, the party votes are called for. I ask the clerk to conduct a party vote. New Zealand National, 60 votes in favour. New Zealand Labour. 32 votes in favour. Green Party. 14 opposed. New Zealand First. 11 in favour. Māori Party. 2 votes in favour. Act New Zealand. 1 vote in favour. United Future. 1 vote in favour. Members, the ayes are 107, the noes are 14. The amendment is agreed to. The question now is that the schedule is amended, stand part. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. Aye. A party vote's called for. Ask the clerk to conduct a party vote. New Zealand National. 60 votes in favour. New Zealand Labour. 32 votes in favour. Green Party. 14 opposed. New Zealand First. 11 in favour. Maori Party. 2 in favour. Act New Zealand. 1 vote in favour. United Future. 1 vote in favour. Members, the ayes are 107, the noes are 14, the schedule is amended, will stand part. Members, we now move to the clauses one and two. The question is, the clauses one and two stand part. The quick. I call Jacinda Ardern. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I very want to make it very, very brief.